Hey guys, it's Hamish here and today we're going to be talking about when to sell a stock. So what reasons for which you should be getting rid of um, some of your investments. Now this video was suggested to me by a viewer and I just wanted to make this video because it's really important to know not only when to buy businesses but when you need to sell them. I've been a little bit sick this week so I didn't fully prepare for this video but I thought I would just make this video and just sort of talk off the cuff about um, what my opinion is on when you should be selling businesses and that sort of thing. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like and let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you're new around here and you haven't seen me before, make sure you subscribe, but let's jump into it. So when to sell a stock. So basically I have two main categories of broad reasons why I would sell a stock and this covers pretty much every single circumstance. And within those two, one of them has two reasons and one of them has one reason. So overall, there are three reasons why I would sell a stock. So the first category, I guess, is that the price of a business exceeds its value. And this can happen in a number of ways, but essentially, if you own a stock and you have valued it at a certain price, and currently on the stock market, it's trading for a price that's higher than that value, then you want to be getting rid of that business. And it's pretty simple because if you're holding onto a stock that is priced higher than its value, and if you really believe in that value, then you're basically assuming that it's got to fall in price because any further price gains above the value is pure speculation because there's nothing there. It's just going up because it's going up because people are buying it. It's not going up because the value of the business is going up. So under price being higher than value, the first reason would be if your stock price or the stock that you've invested in, its price rises above its value. So its value remains unchanged and the stock price has just crept up, crept up, crept up and it's gone over the value that you've calculated. This happens quite a lot. Stocks don't really go up in value uh, incrementally or evenly over you know, the five or 10 years that you're gonna be investing in a business. They're gonna go up quickly, they're gonna have some down parts, it's gonna be all over the place. It's gonna be very um, volatile. And you may invest in a business and within the first six months, it goes up the entire gain that you had set out for yourself over the 10 years. So if you'd bought it at half the value, um, maybe in six months, it just doubles in price for some reason because it's really popular and it reaches its value. And under that circumstance, when the price goes up above the value, you should start to be selling that position. You don't wanna fall into the trap of thinking, oh, it's just gone up double in six months. I don't wanna let go of this stock even though it's above the value because I think it can continue to go up. And if you're doing this, you're just purely speculating at this point. If it reaches its value and it starts to exceed that value, you need to be getting rid of that stock because in theory and in practice, the stock price should be coming back to that value over the long term. And it's not the end of the world if you have to sell a stock that you really like quickly. Maybe it goes above its value for a short period of time, you sell off that position, and then a couple months later, it falls below its value and you're able to buy back in. And that way you've saved yourself just wasting time in the market of being in that stock at that time where it's just gone up and down, goes up, you get out, goes back down, you get back in. And that's the best way to approach investing and it's why we like to find a really specific value in which we can put on a business so that when it reaches that value, we can get rid of it. So that's the first reason why you would get rid of a stock if its price has exceeded its value. Now, another way that a stock's price can ex exceed its value is the price may remain unchanged in the market. However, the core fundamental value of that business has actually fallen because of some sort of change in the fundamentals. So maybe you invested in a business six or 12 months ago and at that time you made up your spreadsheet with your growth numbers which I showed you how to do yesterday if you want to check that video out after this one. Um, so you've made up your spreadsheet and you've worked out a value for it. Six months, 12 months has passed, we've got some new annual reports, some new data that we can enter in um, of, those, uh, of those spreadsheets and maybe the growth numbers are now maybe two, three or four percent lower than they were um, six months ago. So now you've got to revalue that business. And when you revalue the business, you find out that the price is actually now higher than the value. And this would be another circumstance in which you would want to sell that position. Oftentimes you might find a company that has long-term growth of 10% consistently across all the four numbers. Um, and then six months later, that long-term growth number is now 6% or 8%. 
and maybe it's not a huge difference, but when you put it into the valuations, it might just push the price above its value or bring the value down, I should say. And um, yeah, this is when you want to be selling your stock because you, again, you don't want to be holding these businesses when they're above their value. That doesn't make any sense to the core investing principles that are taught by the greatest investors in the world. So that brings us to the second category and the last reason for which you would want to sell a stock. And essentially this reason is that something in the fundamentals has changed so that you can no longer accurately value a business. So we've talked about uh, the price going above the value um, in the stock market and we've also talked about the value coming down because of a change in the fundamentals. But sometimes the fundamentals change in a way that doesn't just uh, affect the value, it actually means that you can no longer accurately value that business so that the value means nothing anymore. So while if we have to adjust our growth rates within a company, um, we can just revalue it and find our new number. Sometimes other things in the company change, which means that we cannot no longer value these companies accurately. And the first one of these things is if the growth numbers are no longer consistent. So if some of the growth numbers are negative now, they're all over the place, they're no longer uniform and growing consistently together. And this is what we need in order to be able to accurately predict future growth. So if this changes, we can no longer accurately value a company. We also look for companies with really low levels of debt because it means that they've got a low risk of defaulting on that debt and going bankrupt or something, or the debt um, significantly impacting the operations because of higher interest rates or something like that. So if a company starts to take on a lot and a lot and a lot of debt, it makes it harder for us to predict where this company is gonna go because now there's a risk of default. And if they default in that 10 years, we're not gonna get our return. Another thing we look for is a wide economic moat. So a company that is protected um, with a moat around its castle um, so that other competition can't just come in and take market share um, and take down the company. We want companies that are protected um, either through their brand or through other ways within their business that they're able to um, protect themselves. And if a company no longer has this protection or their moat is starting to get whittled away, we also can no longer predict um, where a company is going in the future. And lastly, we look for companies with a high ROIC, return on invested capital, which tells us how effectively management is um, at investing our money for us. And if this is starting to get lower, management's getting less effective, again, we can no longer predict where a company is going in the future. So these are the three main reasons in which you would want to sell a stock. And if, you, if you've got the valuation technique down pat, you know how to value a company, you know what needs to be aligned, consistent growth, low debt, high ROIC, great moat, you know what we need in order to value a company, you can take on any circumstance and know when you need to sell a stock. If the price goes up really quickly, goes over the value, you sell it. If the change in the fundamentals causes the value to come down, you sell it. And if something in the fundamentals changes in which you can no longer accurately value a company, again, you want to sell. So that's all for today, guys. That is the reasons in which you would want to sell a stock, when you need to be selling your stocks. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. If you have any video suggestions or any comments, make sure you leave them down in the comments below. But for now, I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.